Hi everyone, this is a quick video to show you how you can start to create your own personalized assessment tasks for your students using Education Perfect. The first thing we need to do is jump into the content library, make sure you're in the subject you wish to create the assessment for, and make sure that you're switched across to edit mode. So most of the time you will open the content library and you'll be in browse mode. However, we wanna make sure that we're in edit mode. What I'm going to do now is add some content and I'm going to add an exam. I'm going to give my exam a name. So I'm going to call this my quick DNA exam. Now I can choose to add questions straight away. I can add existing questions from the EP content library, but I'm just going to show you how you can nice and easily add your own questions. So the first thing I'm going to do down here is choose the question type I want to use first. So I'm going to create a multiple choice question to start off with. So my first question is, identify the four bases that are found in a molecule of DNA. So my four options are option one, option two, option three, and option four. So when you're creating your options, I like to put the correct answer in the first box because that way I know it's there. I don't have to remember to switch around my green ticks. And by leaving this answer ordering as random, it means that every time students see this question, these four options will be in a different order. Minimum number of options is two, maximum number of options is six, and you can have multiple correct answers. Just make sure that you let the students know that there's more than one answer. Just you know, not to try to be too tricky for them. If you did wish to have the questions ordered, so A, B, C, D, uh, so for example, you had an image where you wanted the students to label particular things, you can simply switch across to ordered and those options will appear in the same order. And you can change that random to ordered answer ordering between every question that you put up. I'm going to put in a pretty little picture. I might go with that one. That's a bit nice. That doesn't really give any of the answers away as all four of my options have A and T anyway. If I scroll down the, the bottom here, I can see that this question is going to be marked automatically by the system. The score, I can change the score. So I'm actually going to give this two points because the students have to know all four pieces of information and I'm going to give it an analysis tag. So this is going to be a knowledge and understanding question for my students. That way, when I get the analysis from these results, I can have my outcomes separated from the marking. So it, uh, sorry, Education Perfect Analysis will give me one whole uh, column that tells me the student's overall results. And then any of these tags I create, it will create an individual column for each of those. So I can break up the results into the different outcomes that I would like to use. Down here, recommendations, if I click on add content, I can now go into the uh, science library and go and find, oh, not evolution, genetics, a lesson on the basics of DNA and choose that. And then once I create my tag, if the students don't get that question correct, I can now link them directly back to that lesson on DNA from the content library. So just like you get the recommendations of our pre-build assessments and our quick tests, you can actually add those recommendations to your own assessments as well. So if I just jump to preview, that's what my question looks like. Nice and pretty, super easy to do. So the next thing I'm going to do is show you what a fill in the gaps question looks like. So I have my question prompt here that I prepared earlier. And then I have my passage. So a nice piece of text, paste it into that space. And then what you need to do is choose the gaps. So I'm going to click on choose the gaps and I am going to choose the words that the students need to put in the right place. Okay, so that looks quite good. So if I quickly preview, this is what the students will see. So they'll have the options there and the spaces where they go into. Now I can make this a little bit trickier for my students. So I can add distractors to each of the word. So that means 
gosh, my spelling is not great today. Etc. So I can add distractors to all of the words. And when I preview the question now, you'll see that there's a lot more options than spaces for the students to put their answers into. So now they have to really read the passage and the words carefully to make sure that they're putting the right words in the correct spaces. And now as well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight spaces, so I'm going to make this question out of four. And what Education Perfect will do is then assign half a mark to each of these sections. So if the students only get four correct, they'll get two points. If they get three, they'll get two and a half and so on. This time I'm going to add a different tag, problem solving. And again, I can add my content. Um, and that question's done. The next question we're going to add is a highlight question. So we add a quick quick question prompt first. And then again, we add our text. So a little bit different here. So this is really nice for literacy activities in science. So now we need to choose the words that the students have to select as the correct spelling. So what the students will simply see is this response here and highlight the words in the brackets that are spelt correctly. So what they will do is they will click on the words that are spelt correctly and they will see that, that they are correct. Okay, it's nice just to put a space between the punctuation to make sure that uh, those questions, that we don't get confused with uh, punctuation and things, but you will notice that I do have the, the slash directly after genes. And here we're going to make this three. And again, this is a knowledge and understanding question. I can add an image, so I can upload an image, I can add a sound file, or I can add a video as well to these questions. The last of our automatically marked questions are our annotated questions. So what these allow you to do is turn a long piece of text into an activity for the students where they have to answer multiple questions within that text. So here we can see I've put a piece of text about nucleotides. So now what I'm going to do is select the word nucleotides and I'm going to give the students a question about nucleotides. I can, oh, so we make sure make, we can add more options as well. So just like our multiple choice, the students now have a multiple choice question within the passage. I can add a second one here. So here is my question and here are my options. So you can have up to, I think it's eight of these questions within a passage. So when we preview the question, this is how it appears. So the student, as you add more, these may become smaller depending on how many questions you have and how much text is there. So the students can hover over and click on the highlighted sections to see the questions and they can answer all of the questions at the same time or they can answer them one at a time. So again, uh, you can set the, the marks to, sorry, they need to answer all of the questions at once and then submit. So here we'll set this to two marks and I'm going to create this one as problem solving. Next, we're going to add a manually marked question. So a long response question. So my long response question is going to be simply explain why the process of DNA replication is referred to as semi-conservative. You can give the students a model answer here, or this can be where you put your marking criteria. So when you are marking the assessment, that will appear next to the student's response. And then you are able to give the students a mark. You can add keywords. So obviously we want to know about replication. We want to know about uh, enzymes. We want to know about base pairing. And again, we can give the students as many points as we like. 
and we can also add our. So if we preview what this question looks like, it will simply appear like this. If we put a nice image in there, when we preview it, it makes it just a little bit nicer looking. The students are able to put their response into that space. They can check their answer. And if you were to have the model answer, it will appear there as will the uh, keywords that you want the students to identify in their question. So if I just quickly jump back into edit mode and my keywords didn't save, unfortunately. So we wanted base pairing and we want base pair. So you can put synonyms as well. So uh, Okay. So when I preview the question, and if I put any of those keywords in my answer, you will see that just like when the students complete that activity, they will see that they've put that keyword in their response and it will identify that under the keywords. Now the students won't see this until you've released the results for them. So if you set this as an assessment, the students won't see this part until you release the results to them. Lastly, uh, for science, the one that we probably use the most is the scratch pad. So here I'm going to get the students to do a labeling activity. So here is my question prompt. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an image of a DNA molecule. Come on. <laughs> a little bit of waiting music. Wow, there we go. So I'm going to use this image. So what the students will see is they will see their instructions and they will see the image and then what they can do is put on here they can label with letters each of the different parts alternatively you could give them a key or uh, you could create an image where these labels appear on either side of the image and they can simply use the line tool to draw lines between the different parts of their image. Again, we can give the students a different number of points. So this one, we might give them three because there's six things they need to label and I might create a skills tag for this one here. So once we've added all of our questions, we can rename the questions as well just to, so we can keep a record nice and simply down the side of what questions we've already created in our task. We can copy questions and change them slightly. If we don't like a question anymore we can remove it. Here gives us the option of also creating sections. So we could have multiple sections of the assessment and then we can ask all questions of this section or ask only two from this section and five from the next section and seven from the next section so that we are able to randomize the questions given to the students. But obviously if we're just using this to create a nice formal assessment where we can ask all students the same questions, we possibly just uh, can create them all in the one section. Once we've done all of these things, we've got some settings at the top. So our options, we can reduce the amount of time. So this is just going to be a quick 20 minute task. If you want to hide the question names, the students will just see them as one, two, three. And if you have some calculator type questions, you can enable the basic calculator and the students will then see that appear on their assessment. The last thing we do is then save our exam. we can exit our editor. Maybe. Then all we need to do is save our exam. And once it's saved, we can go back in and edit. 
we can assess the assessment straight from this uh, part of the exam. But if I just jump out of the preview and show you where to find that assessment now in your content library, now we want to switch back to browse mode in your private workspace. And it switched me back to math, so I need to just go into science, then my science private workspace. Oh, and look at that, it's saved about a hundred times, which is always handy. <laughs> Uh, so there it is there now I can preview it and have a look at all of my questions again. If I want to assign it to the student straight away, I can go straight through the assessments tab. So I can set assessment and now I want to use a pre-built assessment because I've already created my own and it's now been built. So I select with the what, will open up my content library, make sure I'm on the right subject in my private workspace and there is my quick DNA exam. Confirm the selection, then choose all your other correct options and then set your assessment and you're good to go. So I hope that video has been helpful. Apologies for the few little uh, hiccups through the middle, but you get hopefully get a, a good understanding of how you can create your own assessment through using the new assessment creation tool. And if you have any questions, please feel free to get in touch. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye.